Hello everyone. In this video, I wanted to talk about the um, what we call par four or parallel four in MATLAB, which is basically uh, an alternative to the four, which is faster and uh, it takes advantage of multi-core processors that these days are on most people's computers and laptops. So if you want uh, to have uh, loops and extensive calculations in your code and you want to speed up the calculations, if some conditions are satisfied, you can use this par 4 instead of a regular 4 and that is significantly going to reduce your computation time. So when you have a regular 4 and you perform some loop, Typically, what this one does is it's going to uh, assign all of the tasks to one of the cores, one of the processors of your computer, your laptop. And that is going to, of course, take some time if the computation is extensive. For example, here, you see what I'm doing. And this code is uh, a little bit modified from um, the one on MATLAB website, MathWork website. So here, you go ahead and generate a matrix with size 400 by 400 from random numbers. So it's a large, giant matrix, like, for example, an image, or like you have a big set of linear equations, right? And A is your coefficient matrix. And uh, then you go ahead and find the eigenvalues of this matrix, 400 eigenvalues, of course, which is uh, very, very costly. This is your costly operation, finding 400 eigenvalues. It's extremely costly operation. And then since some of them could be uh, complex numbers, you get the absolute value of them. So you only look at uh, real numbers. Assign it to this variable res, and then you divide the maximum in res over minimum in res. And uh, this result, you assign it to the ith entry of vector a. And you perform this from 1 to what? To 200. So 200 times, right? You create a random matrix of 400 by 400, and you get the maximum over minimum eigenvalue of this matrix, of absolute value of eigenvalues. Okay? By the way, you know, if you look at one of my videos under Playlist Engineering Mathematics, in a system of equations, right, that you have something like a times x equal b, we call this ratio, which is max uh, sigma, right, over min sigma, correct, right? the maximum over minimum eigenvalue, we call it kappa of a, where kappa of a is called the condition number. And that shows how sensitive your system of equation is with respect to uh, changing uh, the values in A. And if you change the values in A, small uh, values, small amounts, is your final solution X going to change uh, considerably or also small as well? We call it condition number, right? So uh, this guy is really a meaningful thing, this max over min eigenvalue, and sometimes you have to do such a thing, right? And uh, now, so this is a costly operation. And here I use tick and talk to get the time, the runtime for this. But now I want to do the exact same thing, but this time using the parallel four. Now, as I said, parallel four, what it does it instead of giving all of this job to one processor it distributes the job among all of the processors that you have or several of the processors that you have and that way using this parallel computation it is going to bring down the runtime now as i've just mentioned you need the parallel computing toolbox of matlab installed if you want to take advantage of the power for command that's one Two, uh, if you want to see the result of this code where par 4 should re return a smaller runtime compared to 4, run it more than one time. The first time you do it, it doesn't really show you the results, okay? The first time, the parallel 4 and the parallel computing the, apparently do not start right away and not that uh, fast. 
So if you want, the first time you might run it and you'd be surprised, hey, actually Parallel 4 took a little bit more time than 4 to run, but it's just the first time. Anytime you run it after the second time onwards, Parallel 4 is always going to be less than 4. So don't be surprised if the first time you don't see what you expect. And uh, as I said, there are some conditions that you need for Parallel 4. Not every set of four loops can be converted into parallel for loops, okay? There are some conditions that need to be satisfied in order to be able to use it. What are they? The biggest one is that uh, each in each iteration, the operation of uh, the operations for that iteration should not depend on a previous iteration, okay? The iterations should be independent from each other. If one iteration, the values depend on the previous one, you cannot do it. And you can see that example here. So I'm trying to do a, a par four loop and here the value of X at iteration K depends on the value of X at the previous iteration. Such thing you cannot do in a par four. Okay, here you see there is no dependence from I, I to I, I minus one or I, I minus anything else. Each loop is independent. The values are determined entirely from that iteration, nothing else. And the reason is um, not all iterations are, as I said, passed to the same processor. Each processor is doing an independent job. And the way that the iterations are passed to these processors or executed in these processors is non-deterministic. So Mat MATLAB cannot keep track of last time when K was 2, I got the value of x out of each processor. Now that k is 3, the x is coming out of each processor. Since this is non-deterministic, then it is going to lose track of the previous values in different cores, different processors, and so this computation is not going to happen. If you actually uncomment this section and run it, it is going to give you an error and say, hey, the operations are not independent and you cannot do a uh, par for here. That's the biggest thing. There are other things that you need to consider. One is you cannot do nested for loops. Or in other words, you cannot do nested par for loops. A par for loop cannot be inside another one. If you have nested for loops and you want to convert them to nested par for loops, you cannot do it. You cannot have nested par for loops. The third thing is the loop counters that you have in the for loop, they have to take over integer values. They have to be consecutive, meaning that those integers should go like one, two, three. They cannot jump from one to three to five, and they should be increasing. So if you write something like the loop counter goes from 0 to 1, but with increment of 0.1, now it means you don't have integer loop counters. If you go from 1, this is 40. If you go from 1 to 41 with a jump of 4, step of 4, you are not being consecutive. And if you go backwards from 10 to 1 with a decreasing of here, negative 1, that is not going to work. So these guys are not going to work. A parallel for par for loop cannot work, right? So if you say par four, and then i i uh, equals two to ten, and then say par four uh, j j equals uh, one to twenty or something like that, this is not going to work. So these are all examples of what you cannot do. So, of course, you have some limitations, okay? You cannot do everything with a par 4. But now that we know what you can do and you cannot do with it, and we know what toolbox you need and you have to run it twice, here I'm going to run it and show you the change in the computation time. So here I already ran it one time. Now I'm going to run it another time, and I'm going to show you the final numbers. And here you go, after two times, you clearly see that with regular 4, the operation was 23.66 seconds. With power 4, it was only 9.53 seconds. So it's more than 50-60% reduction in time. It's a huge reduction in time. Okay, and this is because I have used several processors on my laptop as compared to only using one for this uh, heavy computation. 
So hopefully this video was useful to you and I will see you in the next lecture. Thank you.